I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm one step ahead of that, which uh, I'm pretty excited about. With Ryan Husker, the new head coach of the Calgary Flames, again, you've been on the staff now for a while, which means you're up close and personal with, with Daryl Sutter, the former head coach. You saw a coach of the year winner two years ago, and then you saw a guy this year that, that clearly it, it got away from him or got away from the team, and, and it led to the change uh, that opened the door for you to step in. With that being the case, um, is it possible to, to try to take what worked from Daryl and marry it with what didn't work? Or is it that is completely off the table and you want to be your own man, your own your own head coach uh, in, in terms of how you're going to approach this group? Yeah, well, first thing I, I think it is you are your own man and you are your own head coach. But along the way, um, the relationships that you develop and the people that you get a chance to learn from, I mean, you take a lot from them. Um, and I mentioned yesterday uh, that you almost, it's like you're building a book, if you will. Um, so there's some things you're like, man, I really love what this guy does here, how he does this. So you, you put that in there and you add that to what you believe. And then same holds true on the other side of the equation. Yeah, you know what, that doesn't really suit me. And that's not something that I would do. And um, if we're sp- speaking specifically about Daryl, um, he is a Stanley Cup winning coach, one of the winningest coaches of all time. And for two and a half years, I've had an opportunity to learn from and work with one of the best. So my time here working with him, um, I feel is really important for me and has had kind of helped me get to this position that I'm at today. And it's all the relationships that you build. Like you take things from all these guys. And I mean, Noodles, it's no different than your partners that you would have played with along the way. You watch guys at the under, other end of the ice and see what they're doing well, you know, maybe I can try to do that. Well, there's no chance I could try to do that. But um, <laughs> you, you've got all sorts of different ways where you can you try to pick up information and you make yourself a better coach along the way. And I'm, I'm really lucky with my path that I've had that I've been able to have those experiences. So what you're saying is there was a slight drop-off between myself and Kippersoff. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a slight one. If you would still look down there and see, hey, that guy's pretty good at this. Maybe I could try that. <laughs> there, there were too many times where I'd watch him make a save and say, there was zero chance I would have made that save. But I'm glad I'm sitting here and I got a front front row seat to watching it. But um, you, you mentioned relationships. Is it is it key to have a, we'll call him a young general manager, and Craig Conroy, it's his first, his first uh, you know, shot at, at being in the main chair. Is it critical to have that relationship with Connie to work together to move forward? Absolutely. It's our job like together. We have to work uh, uh, together basically every day. I mean, he, Connie has a vision for how he sees the team and, and um, what he, he envisions will be a winning team here year after year after year. And it's my job to make sure that um, we get ourselves to the to the level that we're on the same page. Um, uh, we we talk about the game and how we like to see the team play. Our philosophies and our styles and the way we think it are similar. The beauty about it with Connie is is he does a lot of communicating, a lot of talking. So we're going to have great conversations about hey, why did we do this or why aren't we doing this? And I'll I'll be able to go back to him and say, well, this is why we're doing it um, because that's the type of person he is and. When I go back to the communication style, like when we all played way back when, if a coach never said anything to you, um, you felt pretty good about it. Like, obviously, I'm doing something right if if nobody's talking to me. But today's day and age, it's the total opposite. Like, if you go past the guy and you visit with someone and, and maybe you don't visit with the next guy beside him, well, he's going to spend all day thinking, what did I do wrong here? What am I missing? Am I not playing well? So those are the types of things that we want to try to avoid. And that's why the communication is so important. And Craig as the general manager here is one of the best at it. Um, and I'm going to try to work along with him all the way. I saw something yesterday where you have to round out your coaching staff. And we have a guy that we have on the show. That's a potential defenseman coach. And his name is Jason Strudwick. Oh is, my God. <laughs> would he be of any consideration to run the decor back there? What? <laughs> I don't even really know how to answer that one. Like, I'm going to give you a serious answer first. Like, he uh... just say no. It's never happening because I know that's the real answer. 
<laughs> Listen, he thinks and sees the game really well, but when you have hair like that, I don't know if you could ever be a reality. <laughs> yeah. That's well, exactly right. Hustle. That's exactly right. We we have him on the show once a week, and we did this segment, and I'll bring you into this. So it was called the Salad Rebuild, and we keep talking about Struddy where at some point he's going to have to let it go. So I'm going to be honest here. I, I watched a video – of your progression with the Calgary Flames. And early on, there was a, a, a pretty good salad for yourself. And now, you know, you've gone Messier. So at what point did somebody pull you aside? Yeah, when's or the moment it, of truth? Yeah, or did you just decide and look in the mirror and say, I've got to go right down to the wood here? You know what? I think it was actually my wife. And she was at a game and she was looking down on the bench and she went, oh, my God. Like, he's got a serious monkey bum back there. Like, that thing's got to go. So she's told me that night, like, I think you might have to look at shaving that off or doing something with it because you are really thinning up top. So we took it down a little bit. And then it just kind of went further and further from there. Well, what about new coach, new hair? Like, any chance yeah. we could fly you to Turkey for a full new rebuild and get you behind the bench next year, or what? Just just put the plugs in and let her let her run. Uh, <laughs> not a chance. I think if I were to let this thing grow, I would look like Hulk Hogan with that kind of horseshoe around the back. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. had that chat earlier. One of us might be moving in that yeah, direction. Yeah, I think we I'm trending in that names. direction, the toilet oh, bowl. No. It doesn't look good. Yeah, it's not Hey, good. the one good thing about that, though, if you were to take it off, um, you just wait wake up out of bed and you look great <laughs> that is very valid yeah very 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 true with ryan uska the uh, new head coach out in calgary um so I'm, I'm curious ryan like in terms of expectations you know you you guys last year was a disappointing year the year before you guys had a great team you, you won your division you get through the first round the expectations were really high again going into this season uh but turnover with, with daryl out tree leaving moving on you and conroy stepping in like, what, what kind of expectations do you have for the Flames going into next season? Well, they should be high, and I think every player should have that as well. And from the guys that I've been able to talk with already, they are, they're excited and they want to get back at this. And I think when you look at our team last year, analytically, um, we did a lot of good things. Like, our numbers in the areas that we measure and the way we looked at our team were pretty solid. There's a few areas that we have to correct and we're going to work on for sure, but we were involved in a lot of one-goal games last year, and I'm pretty sure we led the league in shootout and overtime losses. And if we do a few things a little differently, um, a little better in certain areas, all of a sudden those one-goal games, maybe we're winning a handful more of them, and then instead of missing the playoffs by three points because of the tiebreaker, well, we're three points into the playoffs, and it's a total different story. So that's how fine of a line it is, and that's what we try to get our players to understand here um you have to bring your best each and every night and you have to trust the people that you're on the ice with so these one goal games that we are a part of we're going to really shift it so we're going to win more of those games than we did this past year and by doing that we're going to give ourselves a much better chance of getting to where we want to be well we wish you nothing but success moving forward and uh congrats on on the new gig and uh, enjoy the off season while you can and we'll do it again down the road thank you for this Thank you guys very much for having me. It was a lot of fun. You got it. Ryan Huska, head coach of the Flames. I like that guy. I'm a yeah. fan. I'm he a knows, big fan. I want to see it work for him. He knows Strutty, eh? Poor Strutty. <laughs> That's so salad. Good. Right away, it goes right after his salad, eh? <laughs> Nothing to do with his hockey acumen, how no. he'd run a bench, you know, what he'd possibly do on the back end. Just, yeah. no, we can't have him. Get like Strutty on excluded. tomorrow. <laughs> AZ, I don't think you're here tomorrow, but I want Strutty on tomorrow, and I want that clip played <laughs> right off the top. Yes. Yeah. We will, uh, we'll bring Strutty in with just that clip from Ryan Huska yeah. just saying. Playing like, it three or four times in a row. <laughs>